Hello everyone, my name is Martin Brown and I illustrate the horrible histories and I write and illustrate lesser spotted animals. And today I'm going to talk to you about how to draw. Now the good news is you already can. You see, that is drawing. Um, now, a lot of people say that they can't draw, which is clearly rubbish, because of course you can draw. What you mean is you don't like what you draw, because it doesn't look right, whatever that is. Um, well, it doesn't look realistic, it doesn't look, it doesn't look accurate. Your picture of a horse doesn't look exactly like a horse. Well, that's, that's different. That's, that's, that's drawing, um, drawing in a style for which you need tons of technique and practice. Drawing horses is hard. Just because you can't draw a horse doesn't mean you can't draw. This, this is drawing. And what's more, if you can do this, chances are you can do that. And if you can do that, then you can probably do that. And if you can do that, chances are with a little bit of practice You can probably do something like that. If you can do this, you can do that. If you can do that, you can do this. If you can do that, you can do this. And I know you can do that. This is all drawing, you see. When we say we can't draw, it's kind of crazy because you can. Um, now, here's the thing. If you want to learn how to draw realistically, you can. It's like anything else. It's like learning to play the guitar, learning a language, learning anything at school, learning how to cook, learning sport. Sport is full of techniques. And we wouldn't think twice about learning the techniques and learn how to play golf or tennis or football. It's the same for music. Whether you're learning how to play the guitar or the violin or the trumpet, there are techniques you have to learn. It's exactly the same for drawing. And look, I can, I can prove it to you just to show you that it's not just magic, you know, I wasn't blessed with some sort of drawing bug. Um, I learned the techniques. But just, just so that you know that you can do it, um, I'm going to draw some faces again. Today I think I'll just talk mostly about drawing faces. Um, but do this guy again, or maybe this guy. Let's just assume that we're going to use for our head a rugby ball. Now you're familiar with a rugby ball? There's a rugby ball? There's a rugby ball for a head. Now a rugby ball is divided up into four segments. I'm sure you're aware of that. Um, so what we need is a rugby ball and we'll divide it up into our quarters. You've got a seam facing you there. And then there's a seam at the side, and another seam at the side, and of course there's a, a seam at the back, which we can't see. Now let's just divide this up, our head, in half again, crossways, and then again under that, uh, three quarters down. We'll use that as our guide. Now, just as a, a rough sort of blueprint, plan for a face, you'll find that, especially for children, your eyes are sort of halfway down your head. So an eye there, an eye there, roughly eye widths apart. Your nose goes from about halfway down to about three quarters. Your mouth is just above, halfway between the bottom of your nose and your chin. Your ears go from about the level of your eyes to about the level of your nose. Same on this side. Your eyebrows are on top of your eyes, usually. 
And it yeah, goes on top. Okay, there's a, a, a face made out of a rugby ball. Now let's do that again. Here's our rugby ball. But this time, I'm going to give it a bit of a twist. Can you see what happens? That straight line when it's facing you begins to bend as it goes around the corner. And the line that was at the side now comes round. So here's our line at the front. It's bent a bit. Our line at the side is coming to view and that's also bent. We'll divide the face up in exactly the same way. Nose on the front, but the front has moved round a bit. The eye is still there. This eye is here. It's beginning to go around the corner, so you don't see it as much. Eyebrows on top, mouth in the same position. The ear has now come into view because the sideline has come into view. And the head's on top. Okay? Right, one more rugby ball. I mean, this is pretty rough, but I'm just, it's just to show you that none of this is magic, you see. This is stuff that I know you can do. Right, divide them up again, half, quarter, and now the side line is facing you. This line here at the front, the front has gone completely round, so the side line's facing you. You got that? So there's the line at the front. The nose is still on the front of the face, the nose hasn't moved around, you're still at the front. But what happened is the front has moved to the side. So that's where the nose is. The eye's still beside the nose, the eyebrow's still above, the other eye's round the corner so you don't see it anymore. The ear is on the side, but the side is now facing you. Mouth is still there, and the head's still on top. So that's some really simple technique about how to turn a face. You can even get a little rugby ball or a, you know, a, a, a tennis ball even and draw lines on it and just see how those lines, those guidelines move as you twist it around. And as a sort of a blueprint for a face, it's really handy because that way you can draw anything you like and then turn it. So that's a bit of technique if you want to draw more realistically. But here's the thing, you don't have to. Some of the most famous, well-respected, and most successful illustrators in the world don't draw realistically. I mean, check out this. The incomparable Axel Scheffler, okay? That is not a realistic picture of a rat. Rats are usually about this big and don't carry swords, you see. But it's a wonderful picture. It's just not a realistic picture. You see, some of the finest work in the world isn't realistic. Uh, what about this? How's that for a mouse? It's gorgeous. Jim Field draws beautifully. It's not realistic. Well, here's another line. Um, Helen Stevens. This is one of my favourite. I've got a poster over there. Um, it's so simple and so remarkably clever. It's mostly yellow with a bit of blue to throw it out. Um, the brown is all the same brown. With just a spot of red here and this patch of white here to draw the eye and be a focus for the smile. Very clever. And the line work is just scribble. There's nothing remotely realistic about this, but it's joyous. It just makes me smile to look at it. See, this is what drawing can be. What about Sophie Hen's little pom-pom? Is that a realistic picture? Or Sarah McIntyre's shark. I'm fairly sure sharks don't have moustaches and teeth like that and, and, and really anything like that at all. But it's a wonderful picture. It's so full of life and fun and movement. So you don't have to draw accurately to be a superb artist. Oliver Jeffers doesn't even draw feet. You see? So you don't have to get hung up on whether your horse looks like a horse or your bowl of fruit looks like a bowl of fruit. There are lots of other ways to draw. And possibly the most important 
thing of all is to have fun because if you have fun doing something chances are you're going to do it more often and if you do it more often you get better at it it's like football or cooking or sport or any of those things you do it every day after school over and over and over again you're going to get better at it that's kind of how it worked well it's certainly how it worked for me when i was little i just drew all the time and all the time and all the time and I seemed to get better at it, but I was practicing. I didn't feel like practice, I was just having too much fun. So let's get back to our face, for example. There are ways of drawing a realistic face, and maybe we'll get onto that. But isn't it more important that you just enjoy drawing in the first place? So let's say you wanted to draw a character. I mean, this guy's fine, but maybe you want to draw something a little bit more specific. You want to draw someone who's happy, or maybe someone who's vicious. Uh, which one would you use for the vicious? Which sort of face shape? Well, I think it's probably this one, because it's already angular and sharp. And this one's soft and cuddly and already a bit friendlier. Or male and female. Which shape would you use for the male? I'd probably use this one because it's already a bit blocky, blokey. This one, softer features, smaller features, traditional hair, and it's a bit feminine. Now, clearly, there's more to gender than just the hairstyles and shape of your face. This is just like a a shorthand, like, like this is. Obviously you can have, have a vicious person with a round face, or a friendly person with a triangle face. You can play around with this. There's nothing cast in stone. What about age? Well, for age, it's just really a question of adding lines. And the more lines you add, the older they get. Or, or how about this, talking about age, just to show the importance, not just of shape, but of the positioning of shape, I'm going to draw the same face, the same features, more or less, twice. Well, all I'm going to do is put the head around and draw a circle around it. Okay, here's one, a little baby, see, um, now, I'm just going to put a circle around this one as well. A middle-aged, portly gentleman, shall we say. Now all I've done is move the circle down, and you see I've, I've aged this, these features, what, 50 years? So just by moving shapes around, you can determine how old someone is, what sort of character they have. So you can do that with any of these shapes. In fact, you could play around with shapes of yourself. I'm not trying to teach you exactly what to draw or how. There's so many different styles. None of them is the right style. Your style is your own. But you can use these tips with your style to do anything you like. And once you've created your character, you can do something else that's rather wonderful and fun. You can bring them to life. Let's just I'm going to fill this page with lots of faces. There's one, there's one, there's one. Let's give a little bit of nose, big nose, and those straight nose, tiny nose. Ears, lots of ears. Oh, lots of ears. But this is just scribble, it really doesn't matter. And some hair, maybe hair like that, hair like that, hair like that, hair like that. And right, there we have a whole bunch of very, very quick faces, characters. But you see now, you can put some life in them. You can 
give them emotions and feelings. And you know this already, you've known this since you were probably this big, since you were tiny, you've known. But that is sad. And that is happy. But you can play around with some of these. That's sort of swap between the two. Or you can go angry. Or what about angry eyes with smiley face? Suddenly they look a bit vicious. Or how about two circles and three dots and you know that this poor thing is surprised. You can play around with shapes. Suspicious, maybe. Um, completely terrified? Or completely mad? I mean, this is the thing. There are thousands of combinations. And you can do this. There is no one who cannot do this. You don't have to be a Rembrandt to be able to draw. You can draw already. That's the magic thing. Now, if you want to learn to draw more realistically, of course you can. There are books about how to draw. This one's a brilliant one by Tony de Sules, How to Draw. It goes from the simplest cartoons and right through to things like perspective and casting shadows. It's really excellent. So it's all there if you want to. But you see, then you can combine these, these, these features and design your characters, you can give them emotions. You can even turn them. And, that, and that's kind of what I do. Every time I want to do a horrible history drawing, which I, I guess I will, I will do now or attempt. Now I will start all my drawings, all my horrible history drawings, start with a with a pencil. Um, I'm going to start with a circle, but I think you probably will struggle to see that. Good thing about pencils, of course, is if it's it's not about being right or wrong, but if it's not in the place where you want it, then you can rub it out. But let's just. I'll use this orange as my pencil instead. Now I want him to face slightly to the side. I'll divide him up with the eyes a bit higher because he's an older person. Um, I'll give him a biggish nose, smallish mouth. And I want him to look a bit Annoyed. And now I want to try and build on a bit of neck, but not a lot because he's got some quite bulky clothes on. Something like that. Now this looks really scribbly, but remember this is pencil. He is probably going to be a bit bigger. And that goes there, and that goes there. Now this front line here, that would carry on down the front of his clothes as well, if he's facing the, and of course you don't have to, you can turn your head. I don't want this guy sort of facing the front. He's got like a cowl on, so it actually covers the top of his shoulders. That would be, come up a bit higher at the back. Over that shoulder. Right, now all this, you see, I'll be rubbing this out as I go. Uh, that shoulder there, it's probably got to come in a bit, and this arm's probably got to come in a bit about there. That's more like it, or even more, really. Now, I give a bit more width to the head, and then the thing about this, it's a horrible history. Where is he from, or what era is he from? 
and I'm going to make him a monk. So, if I'm happy with that, now this is very quick, a drawing like this might take me an hour, but I'm trying to do this in a few minutes. So if I'm happy with all this and I haven't changed my mind and wanted to move any of these pencil lines, I would then go over that line with ink. My hair's going in his ear slightly. His neck goes down there. Top of his cowl. What's his hood, I suppose this is. Just get a picture of someone with a hoodie will give you an idea of what this would look like. Shoulder, and then the front of his tonsure there. Not sure if you'd see his other ear, it's probably round the corner to be fair. And that would be in shadow. A bit of hair on the side. And there we are. He's got a funny little chin happening there. I probably would have done that differently, but and then Bit of shading. Once again, this is a lot quicker than I usually do stuff with paint. As I said, there ain't no right or wrong. And there's, yeah, it's sort of all okay. It's a, it's a monk, really. There's a Middle Ages monk, but based on exactly the same sorts of things that we've already talked about. You're building a, a character, you're adding features, he's got a bit of a turn on, on him. There isn't anything here that you can't do for yourself right now. Anyway, I need to turn this off.